hello there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel so today we're going to talk about my initial impressions of valkyrie and uh i have been messing around with her for a bit for like an hour hour and a bit and um, i definitely have come to some conclusions obviously no matter what happens to her as a champion she could literally be a poop emoji uh she's going to be extremely in high demand due to her high prestige she does place is third highest prestige champion currently in the game so that means a ton of people will chase her regardless of any quality or not but that also comes with kind of a silver lining because one of the coolest things about valkyrie and the thing that gives her a huge amount of her utility is her awakened ability and the fact that at max sig it's significantly easier to utilize that sig ability and that also enables you to throw your heavy attacks and significantly increase your damage output you can still benefit from this sig ability well um, even if at, you are at lower sig but the key is that at max sig you only need one pierce or one bulwark to trigger your corresponding effects now this will be virtually the most capable unstoppable counter because you're not trying to nullify a buff you're not trying to place a debuff on opponent you're not like Captain America trying to remove an active buff but unable to deal with passives, so and so forth. There's virtually no other champion in this game who deals with Unstoppable better because it just happens in background. It's not an active kind of ability that triggers. It doesn't nullify. It doesn't require you to have a buff specifically active. It doesn't require you to have... No, well, it does require you to have a buff active, but uh, it's nothing to do with that. <laughs> and it can be a passive as well. And it doesn't ask you to place a debuff on opponent. And similarly to stun effects. It's going to be extremely easy with her to completely ignore any and all stun debuffs. Now, unfortunately, that ability is not as potent as the unstoppable counterpart because it is only debuffs. So it means passive stuns will be still something to worry about. Like Doom is going to be able to slap you. Toad is going to be able to stun you even though, well, actually she might be decent against Toad as well. Still. Uh, it's still very, very good. It's still going to work against Mesmerize. It's still going to work against Encroaching Stun or some other pesky abilities. Now, how to play with her, it's actually extremely simple too. You basically need to get past and below thresholds of 10. So you're basically kind of um, fighting against Void, except this time Void is your own champion and you get benefits instead of avoiding penalties. And uh, when you, whenever you finish a combo with a light ending combo, so the fourth light, that means you will be inverting your combo if you are past the combo of three. And if you finish a com with a medium, you'll be getting it back to normal. Every time you cross a threshold of 10, depending in which direction you are going, you either get a Pierce buff or a Bulwark buff. So Pierce buff lets you do more damage through block. Bulwark improves your own block proficiency. Then, pending on that, she has up to 90% chance to purify non damaging debuffs, but this ability is not reliable. And up to 90% is still not the 100%. It still has to be kind of like ramped up throughout the fight. And it's going to be neat. It's going to come in handy in plenty of fights, but it's not one of those abilities that you can go in the fight and like fully rely on at all times, every time is going to be something that if anything makes her more annoying to fight against i think that it has a more impact than it does here but that's about it now she does have some passive dormant ways that can come in handy but you activate those only really with um, your level one which is typically the one you, that you don't use at all and then on top of that uh that's pretty much it. She has a combo shield. She's actually very simple champion. Basically, use your level 2, throw it in a block, kind of like Massacre. She's very much like Massacre, in fact, with the difference that she doesn't rely on debuffs to do damage. And... Yeah, <laughs> you hit opponent's block a lot, and you throw your special 2 in a block a lot. But with her ability to bypass Unstoppable, she, again kind of fills a different niche. So how does her damage output looks like in comparison 
think this is the first clip and uh keep in mind i'm still fairly new this is quite early on as i have been practicing with her here we can see well we can see me make a couple of mistakes as well but uh, the base idea is I want to get past a combo of 10, so I was kind of like cutting my combo short there. So we can see that I got past combo of 10, I got a Pierce buff, I inverted it. Now I need to finish with a medium. Whilst I got below 10, I got a Bulwark buff. Now again, I got another Pierce buff. Moving past combo of 10, I invert inverted it. And I got a Bulwark Paso. And now we're going to go up past 10 combo again. I got my third Pierce buff, that is the max. And now at this point, I want to throw my heavy attack. And uh, now I'm going to hit opponent's block, throw my uh, special in the block. Unfortunately, he had like a super high perfect block chance there. But uh, then whilst my Pierce buffs are active, I was actually dealing a significant amount of damage to Winter Soldier in block. For those of you who are wondering, when you are fully ramped up with your pierces, yes, you do more damage in the block than you do in your basic hits. And as well through block, you deal kind of like passive instant bleeds if you are fully ramped up. And that is definitely extremely helpful. So here we have converted three Pierce buffs again uh, into passives. And the coolest thing is that level one, sorry, level two has quite a lot of hits that you virtually immediately get back a new active buff. And those passives are paused. So if your Valkyrie is at the max sig, then you can do this and still virtually always maintain your utility because that fury pause, uh, fury pause is your passives and you still have your one buff act, one effect active at virtually all the time. So now we can see that they are quickly expiring there. But at this point, again, I'm back up at three pierce and two bulwark buffs. So now I'm gonna get below, uh, below count of 10 again now i have max ramp up again three buffs sweet now i drop my heavy attack and we can see the numbers are fairly substantial there especially when that fury is active because that fury gets more potent for each pierce or bulwark effect that we have uh active and if i convert the active pierce buffs with a heavy attack then they are doubled in potency as well so this is kind of like the baseline damage here and uh for a five star rank three it hasn't been the craziest quickest fight but it is definitely respectable speed so i'm gonna show the fight results there in just a moment now we can see that again quite significant amount of block damage none of the numbers are like super big yellowy you know crits but she does a decent amount of damage and i finished this fight in 2 minutes 56 seconds, 110 hits, and I'm sure I could have played it somewhat more effectively. As a baseline comparison, I brought in Shang-Chi as well. Now, I'm fairly decent using Shang-Chi. I'm not entirely sure which one would be like the quickest and fastest rotation. In this fight, I'm just basically going to be trying to get as many Chi charges as I can and throw my level 2s, because uh, that is how, for the most part, I play Shang-Chi. I didn't want to build up for like one mega level 2. I don't think that time-wise it is any quicker um so yeah so i'm basically here just shooting off my level twos now if it is quicker to build up one big giant level two then you guys can let me know about it but basically i'm just getting as many chi charges as i can and spamming my level twos for the guaranteed crits and that is how i get my damage there and shang chi finished at three minutes 13 170 hits obviously successful hits is a uh, irrelevant metric here because with valkyrie we do hit a lot in opponent's block and the fight duration here is uh, three minutes 13 so it's virtually the same thing really so she has a very good damage output it's not over the top bonkers it's not cgr but it's quite decent now here let's take a look at the valkyrie in like a casual act five fight I'm, i have a couple of them recorded with a class advantage as well. So here we can see that I get my first Pierce buff. I go below 10 again to get my Bulwark buff. And I'm going for a, another Pierce buff. Now I have two. I'm going to be dropping below. Sweet. Now I get my third Pierce buff. I shoot my level two in the block. And the fight has barely lasted. And he's at like 20% health. Now at this point I really just need to hit the block a couple of times. And he drops dead there. So one second. Let's just check out the fight time sorry wrong fight 
So I, I'm too bad that it didn't catch the amount of HP this guy had, but the fight itself in Act 5 was like 30 seconds. Uh, so it's, you know, not too bad at all, I would say. Again, it's fairly comparable. Now, here we can go up against Shang-Chi, and I'm going to showcase that uh, the debuff frag is kind of really inconsistent here. Now, we don't have... Here, Disorient is messing with us as well, because Disorient is reducing our block proficiency, and obviously, against those debuffs, it's much less likely to have them shrugged off. But in general, it is never going to be a guaranteed thing. And again, whilst it is going to be useful in some fights, like against some jaw fixits, for instance, it's still, again, never going to be really guaranteed. But look at that damage, though. <laughs> look at that damage. At level 2 in the block, pretty much finishes it off. Also, like that level 2 will always give you enough time to parry there. I'm going to go up against Angela, and now Angela is debuff immune, and I noticed that if you are somewhat inexperienced with Valkyrie, that immediately, sorry, she's uh, stun immune, party stun immune, or debuff, either way. But if you're inexperienced with Valkyrie, then it immediately becomes kind of somewhat harder to use her, because you cannot use those parries to get your openings, and it is going to be harder to land your heavies. But overall, I do think she's going to be a champion that deals extremely well with stun immunity because she can kind of indiscriminately attack opponent or attack, attack opponent's block and it doesn't really matter much. So you can just keep pounding away at their block, really. And that is one thing that I'm going to definitely realize towards the end of recording these clips is that you don't really need to kind of bother having like a perfect rotation in most of the fights. You just hit opponent's block and you're going to be happy. Here I tried to shoot level off from distance. And, uh, well, I did connect it with the block, but uh, obviously most of the hits whiffed. That was definitely a mistake. Now, here I should have been trying to hit her block more often. As we can see, that definitely does much more damage. Or, more importantly, I should have just yeah dropped that level too. And uh, here is the fight in Act 6 now, 6.1 now, and uh, this is a fairly scrappy fight, but I'm just going to use it as kind of like a conclusion for Valkyrie. So what do I think about Valkyrie? Well, number one, again, is the obvious thing. Her prestige is super high, so that alone makes her super desirable for a ton of top-tier players. Well, myself included as well. I'd absolutely love to get a 6-star Valkyrie. But that is not it. She's definitely going to be one of those prestige champions that I do feel is going to have a niche, a space, a presence in the top levels of the game. I don't think she's necessarily going to be a champion you see all day, every day, everywhere. And uh, in fact, I do think that Massacre in several ways is superior to Valkyrie. Maybe not overall, but the fact that Massacre can also access a huge amount of debuffs and do huge amounts of damage over time or if need be massacre can quite literally finish the fights indiscriminately hitting opponents block as he can still gain power similar to valkyrie hitting opponents block and then dropping level twos in the block and the fact that massacre never really needs to hit opponent then with valkyrie that feat is much harder to achieve if you never want to hit opponent you definitely have to include level 1s, and uh, you need to get those passive dormant weights, and then you can achieve it, but it's kind of harder to have an entire fight where you never strike opponent directly, because finishing combo with a light in opponent's block, or a medium, obviously, is likely going to get you punched in the face. <laughs> so there are downsides to this character design, 100%. Um, the same time, again, she does have that unique aspect of completely ignoring Unstoppable, which, let's face it, Unstoppable is a big pain in the ass no matter where we see it. And uh, a damage output, again, is comparable to relatively high tier skilled champions. So yeah, I do think she's a champion worth hunting, worth acquiring, worth ranking, worth being happy about. But, here is a somewhat... An important line. If you have got a six star that is unawakened, I think in pretty much every single way I would prefer Massacre, unawakened or unawakened. I do think that if you get Valkyrie, you have to be willing, able to commit to it and get her to a super high sig level. 
because I, yeah, I do think that is going to be, well, what's the best way to put it? Because if you want her purely for her abilities, strike opponents block, then I think Massacre is better. I, I do think that overall what puts her obviously above Massacre is the fact that she can go stun immune, ignore unstoppables, and in order for that to be like a very effective thing, she does need to be super high sig, which is something many people will want to do anyways because of the high prestige. But if she's like undooped and you have, if you can't get her awakened, I don't think I'd be in a super huge rush to get her ranked up extremely high. Or if you do want a champion with a similar build ticket, I do think Massacre would be better then. I would rank her before Massacre if you can seek her up. That's kind of my like final conclusion, having played with her. Let me know what you guys think. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the 